welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of the Topper Talk podcast, the official podcast of the Red Towel Trust Collective. As always, feel free to follow us on all the social medias, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, uh, Facebook, everything. We're Topper Talk on there. Uh, This podcast is sponsored by the Fireman Moving Company. Uh, They are the official moving company of WK Athletics. Not only can they be trusted to move all the coaches in and out of Western, but they can move you anywhere nationwide. The Fireman Moving Company is owned and operated by Firemen and is founded by WK alumni. If you're looking to move sometime soon, give them a call at 270-791-1755 and get yourself a free quote, man. I promise you they will make your move and your life a lot easier. As always, I've got uh, Tyler with me, vacation in Tyler, man. How you doing, man? You ready to jump into this episode? Yeah, man. Sorry we didn't get together last night. Uh, just kind of tired, fell asleep, and laying down here for Walton Beach. It's a, it's a double red flag. My wife's talking in the background. Uh, so can't get out there just yet, but I'm, I'll be looking forward to it. But first, got to break some big news this week. Let's go. Yeah, before we do that, though, let's uh, get caught up with that Red Towel Wrap-Up, uh, which is sponsored by Trent Bedding. Let's get a word for them and then jump in. Don't forget your headboard, pillows, and your sheets. We got everything you need for a good night's sleep. Number one on the same check, best of Bowling Green. All right, all right, all right. Hey! Twins, fool, queen and king, mattresses for anything. Come and pick it out and we can bring it to your house. Have you sleep real good before the weekend's out. Trim bed, trim bed, trim bed, trim bed. Trim bed. It's just like, it's just like a mattress store. Hey, hey. All right, so uh, baseball, they uh, they played Jacksonville State. They won four uh, two game one, uh, won game two four to five, and then won game three eleven to six. So a clean sweep. Softball, they played Sam Houston State, won game one three to one, game two three to one, and game three five to one. So good sweep by both. Uh, baseball team and softball team yeah i think last week when we recorded uh both both diamond teams had lost their series so it's nice that we bounced back got a couple sweeps you know in conference play so needed that get back on the right track um you know i saw coach rarden with the baseball team post that this was the first time in i think almost 20 years i think that the baseball team had won 19 games uh before april 1st so Baseball team trending up by stock now. Uh, both teams winning and putting games away, so love to see it. Uh, tennis, they had a doubleheader versus Tennessee State, and they kicked some butt seven to zip and four to nil. Yeah, back at home, they had lost a couple cu- tough matches in Alabama for their you know four match, I think. Alabama swing they just had, came back home, swept Tennessee State uh, in a doubleheader. Uh, I think that's eight consecutive home games, uh, home matches now that they've won, and that's a program record. So, again, love to see that. The Hilltoppers at home are tough to beat. Uh, moving on track, nine seniors were, were recognized at Hilltopper Relays. Alana Anderson, Rich, Rachel Flincham, Natanya Linares, Zach Martinez, Devin Montgomery, Rory O'Connor, Connor, Lucy Rutherford, Taylor Walker, and Grace Turner. Lots of personal records, including Aya Basic. Joining the 60-meter 60, 60 club in the hammer throw, Amelia Roskowski cleared 3.78 meters in the pole vault, a personal record. Nick Farnoff set a high jump personal record at 1.98 meters. Katie Eisenbarger took first and tied a program record at 1.81 meters. Grace Turner set a personal record at 1.76 meters. Kaysen Barton had a personal record and a number three overall in program history with a 58.16 meter hammer throw. Goodness gracious. On the track, Cameron Horton set a personal record in 200 meter dash and Michael House and Sam Brophy set personal records in the 5,000 meter race. Full results can be found on WKUSports.com. Do you got anything to 
stay behind that. All right. Well, that concludes the Red Tail Wrap Up brought to you by Trim Bed and Company. Moth, back to you. Yeah. Uh, good Red Tail Wrap Up. A lot of wins. Uh, obviously, the Hilltopper relays got to recognize the nine seniors uh, on the team there. Saw a lot of personal records, just a lot of guys and girls. Uh, competing at a high level um, and just love to see personal best, especially when you're at home. So, you know, keep that going, obviously, uh, as we roll into spring and conference tournament coming up. So uh, jumping into our main segment, you know, the last episode we recorded, we did allude to at the end of it that there had been rumors um, that coach Steve Lutz had been being entertained by other programs Um to possibly join them as their head coach. You know, the main target there was Oklahoma State. And that did become official um, as of yesterday afternoon. That's Monday afternoon. We're recording on Tuesday. Uh, Steve Lutz uh, officially resigned from WKU, uh, met with the team, let them know. Todd Stewart met with the team. Um, And then he was almost immediately announced by OSU men's basketball uh, as being hired as the new head coach there in Stillwater. So best of luck to coach Steve Lutz. And now, you know, we turn our focus on who the next head coach is. And between that being announced and now, you know, 24 hours later, you know, that has been announced to be Hank Plana, you know, assistant coach on the staff uh, is being elevated to the head coach. But first let's wrap up uh, coach Lutz's tenure uh, he was only here for one season. He ended with a 22-12 and 12 record, which included a Conference USA Tournament Championship in Huntsville and a trip to the NCAA Tournament versus in Indianapolis versus Marquette. Uh, WKU ultimately lost that game, but with Coach Lutz now having won three consecutive conference tournaments and gone to the NCAA Tournament three years in a row in his only three years as a head coach, he vaulted himself into that coaching carousel conversation. Uh, we heard him rumored, you know, to be linked to the SMU job. Um, didn't materialize, obviously. And then the Oklahoma State job started to g- gain a lot of steam. Uh, we did discuss those rumors on the last episode. There had been a lot of smoke there. And ultimately, um, you know, that rumor drug out because of Oklahoma State waiting on the buyout of their former coach to drop off. On Monday, um, and now here we are, it was officially confirmed earlier yesterday afternoon. Uh, But I just have to say, you know, I have nothing but appreciation for Coach Lutz and what he did uh, in his year here uh, at WKU. Um, He was very approachable. He was a very um, just engaging coach. He joined us for an interview uh, before the season began, after the schedule was released. You know, we got to sit him down and, and just have a nice, candid conversation with him about the schedule, about the players, his staff, uh, and his expectation for the year. You know, this roster, was it was rebuilt. Uh, we had nine new players um, after Stansbury left last year. A lot of players hit the portal. Not a surprise. Nine new players, new coach, new staff. Um, and, you know, we saw all season that this team showed a lot of promise um, even through inconsistent play. And then we had that magical Huntsville run and the NCAA appearance, which had been 11 years in the making. So I have nothing but high regard for Steve Lutz and for his family and for what he did here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I think he left this this job in a better place than what it was when he inherited it, you know, just over a year ago last year. So um, nothing but praise here for me, Tyler. You know, what are your thoughts on Coach Lutz and you know officially taking that position at Oklahoma State and leaving us here uh, at WKU? Well, the only thing I can say really is it sucks. You know, I kind of wanted at least another season with him, uh, but right now, you know, his stock has done nothing but climb, and it'd be smart for a big school to get him right now. Um, I mean, clearly he has showed. He can coach. Uh, I mean, we was on a four-game, four or five-game losing skid just to end the season. He turns it around, gets us, you know, win three games in three days or four games in four uh, to get back to the conference championship. I mean, some people were down on the program at that point. And I, think, I, I figured they would win. I knew they would win. But 
if I didn't think there's a little voice in the back of my head saying, man, you know, if Stansbury was – he was winning at the end of the season sometimes and he couldn't get into the, uh, to the conference championship and win it, uh, you know, I feel like that could have been – it kind of, kind of like a bad omen that we's on that skid, but I mean, he figured it out. He got the team uh, really firing on all cylinders at the most important time. Uh, he really had no momentum going into that to that tournament, and he just he, you know he he turned it around and got us going. Um, I I know people will complain about the uh, non con being too easy, but I mean, we still what lost. I think five, six games in it. Um, I mean, the coach can do what he has to to get the team to success. And like I said, I wish we had more time with him because I would love to see seeing him uh, lead the team back to the NCAA tournament, maybe get a a, a win out of it. Because honestly, last year I was kind of uh, – at this time, whenever they announced that he was a new head coach, and I watched him play, I think it was Alabama in the NCAA tournament first round. Of course, he gets beat. And, uh, you know, you, you had people throwing in names like Will Wade, uh, Steve Lutz, and I knew Will Wade. Steve Lutz was really an unknown commodity. And, man, I'm, I think we picked the right coach. And, I mean, I, I was so excited there when the, when – when after we got done talking to him, and to see what he could do with the with the team in Miami, he he finally put the fire back in the program. I mean, that's something that that's one of his legacies here. As short as it may be, he put he got the program uh, and the fans fired up, and know that we can go to the NCAA tournament. And for for that, I I will thank him, and I hope nothing but the best for him as he continues his career in Stillwater. Absolutely. Now we turn our attentions to the new coaching hire that was made official, um, you know, yesterday afternoon uh, or this morning, rather, you know, after the um, coach Lutz departure. And that's Hank Plana. Like we said earlier, he was uh, the assistant coach on staff this season. He has officially been announced as the 17th head coach in Western Kentucky men's basketball history. Um, The press conference for that will be Wednesday, tomorrow at 11 a.m. at Diddle Arena on the main court. So if you can be there, you know, obviously show up, support this team, support this staff, support the new coach. I mean, this this team, this program, this university is bigger than any any player, any coach. So we we need to get behind whoever is hired there. I know that it has been a little bit controversial on, you know, who the – people applying for the job and who may or may not get hired, but it, it's Hank Plana and that's who it is. Um, I think we couldn't have made a better decision as far as continuity for the program. Um, I think we have a really good chance at retaining a lot of our roster, um, you know, especially the main core pieces that we want to keep. Um, I'm hoping the same for the staff, but let's talk about coach Plana get to know him a little bit uh, as he kind of been, you know, in the second seat this year, we haven't talked about him a lot. He joined coach Lutz's staff this year after eight years at Indian Hills community college there. He compiled an overall win loss record of 225 wins and 35 losses, which is crazy. Insanely good. It's an 86.5% winning percentage. That is good at any level, no matter where you are. Um, that's amazing. You know, that's winning basketball. That's identifying talent. That's putting good teams on the floor and winning games. Uh, Let's talk about a little bit about his background. Uh, He graduated from Providence in 2007. From 2007 to 2009, he was a grad assistant at Providence. 2009 and 10, he was an assistant coach at Arkansas Fort Smith. 2010 and 11, he was an Indian Hills uh, assistant coach. Uh, 2011 to 15, he went to South Plains. Uh, Juco College in Texas as an assistant. And then from 2015 to 23, he was the Indian Hills Community College head coach. And then this past year, he was the assistant coach here at Western Kentucky. Um, Indian Hills Community College qualified for the National Junior College National Tournament in seven of the eight seasons that Hank Plana was on was the head coach. He led the team to eight consecutive regular season titles six postseason conference titles, 
in four district championships. Hank Plana coached 11 All-Americans in his eight years at Indian Hills, along with 36 All-Region performers. A total of 58 of his players moved on from Indian Hills and went to Division I schools, and nearly 20 of his former players are playing professionally around the globe. Uh, not notably, Hank Plana has helped deliver several players to the highest level. Um, Thomas uh, Wadinste landed with the 2019 National Championship Virginia team, uh, while the following season, Tyron Grant Foster went to uh, Grand Canyon University, and he was also being uh, recruited by Bill Self at Kansas. And then the past four seasons, uh, we've seen three Warriors uh, go to Power 5 schools, and Maurice Kalu went to Oregon State, Chris Payton went to Pittsburgh, and Javon Hadley went to Colorado. So, Tyler, we just touched on a lot of Hank Plana, his, his resume, his background, you know, his experience that he brings here to Western Kentucky. You know, he wins a lot of ball games. He identifies mm -hmm. and recruits talent that is able to transition to P5 and professional levels. Um, and really, I think the only, the only thing that I've really seen being a knock on this hire is his lack of D1 experience, you know, as, as a coach. You know, one year here, uh, he was at Providence, you know, previously, you know, when he first graduated college. So how are you feeling about Hank Plana with his resume and what he brings to Western Kentucky? I mean, I feel very optimistic about it. Um, you know, if he, he, he's up and coming, uh, if he's got that hunger and, you know, he's, he's had to pay his dues, you know, he didn't start out or kind of being assistant coach at some of these, you know, uh, P5s or G5 schools. I mean, he's really, he's really coming up from the mud. He's getting it out the mud, as as the saying used to go. Um, and today, I saw a quote from Bill Self and, and Tony Bennett, uh, both praising uh, praising Hank and ten, and saying how lucky Western is to, to have him and how he's going to do a great job here. Um, <laughs> I sure hope we get him longer than a year, though. But I mean. When you see his number, but uh, him putting 58 players into into D1 programs, uh, I mean, he knows how to develop. And if I'm not mistaken, he also developed a player that came into Diddle and was dropping threes on us all day left and right, a little shark bait there, Marshall Henderson. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he, he coached him whenever South, he was in South Chicago. Plains. Yep. South Plains. So I mean, we saw what he what he can do firsthand. Now, he's playing over there, I think, in Israel or Iraq, in the Middle East, someplace I I, I don't really want to go. Um, but I mean, if you can turn around and and develop those players, now I know in the in the time of the transfer portal in IL, you may not get uh, a player three four years. It's going to be hard to hold on to them. But if you can hold on to a player from freshman up to senior. And you can develop them and get them better every year. I think by the time you get, I believe, whenever they turn to a senior, you, you're going to have an all star on your hands. And if he can develop and get them going that way, man, even more the better. Uh, hopefully, some more some more people decide to uh, decide to sign up for that Red Tail Trust. That's a good selling point. Uh, but no, I he, he's gotten eighty. Did you say he's gotten eighty six point five percent winning percentage for many hills over eight years? I mean. You show me uh, a P5 coach that's got that. I, I just or, or or G5, any D1. I know some people's wanting D1. They they they's like we want D1 experience. Okay, we had that with Stansbury. What did that give us? I mean, great talent. He could recruit with the best of them, but the on field shenanigans or I'm sorry, off the court shenanigans and failing to get us into the NCAA tournament. I mean, we. We went 11 years without it. Uh, I, I think in my in my case, I'd rather – I'm looking for a hungry coach who wants to prove himself because I think if, if you can if you can give a coach that opportunity, and he, he, he's going to coach his ass off. And he's going to set his players up for success. And, I mean, you, you could have that or you could have someone up in D1 being lazy and just kind of going through the motions. And, I mean, that – Though that the, the second coach ain't really going to 
elevate West Kentucky into anything special. With the hungry coach, he's he's going to be grinding. He's going to be kicking kicking ass. He's going to be on his P's and Q's ready to elevate West Kentucky program because he knows if he can elevate this to even higher, I mean that's only going to help him out in the future as well. So I am I am thrilled with the Hank Plano hire. Excuse me. Yeah, let's talk about you know some of the Indian Hills uh, community college teams that he had to kind of get an idea of what we might expect next year. You know, we you know weren't exactly sure what to expect with Coach Lutz last year. We knew he had played a faster pace and tempo of ball, and he brought that to Western Kentucky. We're their number one adjusted pace team in the nation. Uh, so looking at Hank Plana's teams, uh, in the eight years that he was there, all eight of his teams averaged over 81 points per game which is more than what we averaged this year at Western Kentucky with two of those teams averaging over 90 points per game, including a 95.7 uh, scoring average, his initial season. In that first season, they went 29 and five with 12 of his players going to four year schools. The next year they went 20, 29 and five again. Uh, an interesting note, they had a former Hilltopper, Chris McNeil on that team might remember, remember him from the Ray Harper days. Uh, so he was familiar um, with Western Kentucky, at least, you know, from a player recruitment standpoint, you know, had a form, had a film, former Hilltopper join his squad. Then in 2017, 18, they went undefeated in the regular season, 2018, 19, they went 27 and seven, 2019 and 20, they went 30 and three. This was his best defensive team. They allowed just 64 points per game while they were averaging over 81. So they were just blowing teams out. 2020-21, uh, that COVID year, they went 21-3. and 2021-22, they went 27-6. and six. Then 2022-23, they went 29-5. and five. So just a lot of winning basketball. I mean, again, you win 86% of your games over an eight-year period. You're winning a lot of ball games. They were scoring a lot of points, so they're obviously getting the ball up and down the court, um, identifying scores, um, getting shots up quick in in the shot clock. A fast pace. You know, we thought we had a fast paced team this last year, and we were scoring eighty point three points per game. I think it was. All of his teams averaged over eighty one. Not saying that's going to be the exact result that we'll have year one, but at least we have an idea of what kind of tempo and pace and how he wants to play. He wants to play fast. He wants to score a lot of points and he can still put a good defensive team on the, on the court. You know, we see one year they were holding teams to 64 points per game. That's going to win you a lot of ball games. Uh, if you can be that good, that efficient offensively um, and then hold people to that many points, um, it's it's impressive. So Tyler, you know, what are your overall thoughts on you know Plana's uh, resume here, his win loss record, and do you think it will transition and translate to Division One success? Uh, I think that win loss record, I think mean, that's 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 really uh, outstanding, outstanding, and uh, man, I I sure hope it translates. I I, I look forward to the fast paced game. Um, because you know it is, it can turn into pure chaos for the opposing team. And uh, I mean, if I mean, his team was averaging over eighty-one points a game, I mean, Jesus, I'm I'm here for it all day, every day. Um, I just think it may take. I don't. I don't see a problem why it wouldn't. We just got to get the right players here. He's got to get his players that he knows will buy into the concept and uh, always keep their head on the swivel when they're running up and down the court. But uh, no, I'm 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 really excited for him to uh, to take take over the helm here at Western Kentucky. Yeah, and obviously the first thing you know, the first objective that we have to talk about, and I think one of the biggest reasons and pros of of hiring and or elevating coach Plana was the fact that we should be able to retain a majority of the roster. So, you know, just talking about who, who we have and who we can hope to retain, you know, I think the first two guys you have to look at are Don McHenry and Enid Colombe. Uh, they both, you know, came here from Indian Hills uh, with coach Hank. And I would like to assume 
that um, those guys are going to return next year as well with Hank as the head coach. Now, there are some seniors uh, in Dante Allen and Brandon Newman that participated in senior night festivities. And quite frankly, I'm not 100% sure they'll be back. I, you know, I don't have any info to that. I don't know if they plan on transferring or if they have other pro aspirations. Um, but usually when guys walk and they take that senior night festivities, you know, usually that's kind of a precursor to what their mindset may be and what they are looking forward to in the future. So I'm not sure if those two will be back. Um, you know, and if we only lose those two guys, uh, plus having Rodney Howard who exhausted his eligibility, then we're returning the bulk of our core Currently, right now, the only uh, recruiting signee that we have is Kate Unsold from here locally in Ward Central. So we'd have to find two more portal players to fill those positions lost by uh, Rodney, Dante, and Brandon uh, with Cade being added to the mix. So, you know, really, I mean, you'd have to think that we'd have a pretty good shot um, of having a lot of continuity and just the players being familiar with each other. Um, you know, the system sounds like it's going to be pretty similar. They're going to get up and down the court fast, score a lot of points, um, and have familiar faces. I think we saw growing pains early this season. You know, we can all remember the Wichita State game that we lost. Um, the three-point streak was broken. We just weren't a cohesive team at that point. Um, you know, the 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 tournament in Canada that we just we lost to a couple teams we shouldn't have lost to. Um, there were just games up and down the schedule early in the season that we could have won um, if we were playing our best basketball like we were later in the year. And I think that's what everybody was hoping to see if we did have a second year with Coach Lutz, having some continuity, not so much roster toner, turnover that we saw almost every year with Coach Stansbury. It felt like we were you know, getting six, seven, eight, nine new players every single year. And granted, it happened last year, you know, nine new players, but when you have a coaching turnover um, and a coach hired from outside, that's not against the norm. That's what you're going to expect. Um, elevating a coach from within, um, you know, I think we're all expecting to see some continuity here. So, Tyler, what are your thoughts on the roster and potentially, you know, bringing back almost everybody? Um, you know, how's next year look for you with that shaping up? Well, hopefully Lutz don't turn into a Brahm and poach a lot of players up there to uh, his next school. Uh, but I don't think he will. I mean, I, that's, that is one great thing about hiring Plano is you do retain the core of your team, uh, especially if only them two or them three players, uh, one with his, uh, with his uh, eligibility extinguished, can, can uh, leave or transfer. If we can hold on to, you know, Tegan, um, Jack, uh, Wu, and, I mean, that's – that with, along with Enoch and McHenry, I mean, that's going only going to add to. And because uh, you're right, con continuity is very important because players have to feel comfortable together. They have to feel like a unit out there, which they are. And, uh, you know, I was kind of looking forward to – before this whole let's – thing came along to our to like one off season that was not just complete chaos we didn't know who was coming back we didn't know who we were getting to re to replace and if that eligibility issue of the income player would keep them out for a few for a uh, few months so uh now that plano is named the head guy i kind of can go back and feel like i can relax just a little bit because i you know it's it basically you're right basically the same system and uh, there's, and I feel like he's going to get high character guys, guys that he knows wants to win and will buy into his program. So I'm very comfortable with this core, with this team coming back. Uh, there's no reason not to. Uh, I, I, I say bring it on. Let's let's hurry up and get that that news of, of some of the new players though coming out. I saw on Twitter earlier that he's showing some in, uh, Western Kentucky showing interest in a Duke Hall transfer. I forgot the name, but I saw that. Um, and you got to think some of the star players from Indian Hills. Yeah, now since he sees, now since they see, hey, our old coach is now the new head coach over here. Let's see if we can get in and just continue to buy into his to his program and his system. So I'm very excited about it, man. 
Yeah, then I think the next question after the roster is obviously the coaching staff. You know, what what is his first coaching staff here on the Hill going to look like? Uh, and again, we have no insight, no knowledge to how this is going to look. But in looking at his coaching staff over his eight years at Indian Hills, he was frequently dealing with turnover at his assistant coaches. Now, I don't know why. I would assume that if you're winning 86, 87 percent of your games, those guys were probably being plucked away to other bigger programs, um, you know, to help them improve their program. So, you know, he's not unfamiliar with, you know, identifying young talent and, and help and bring them onto his staff to help them win games. You know, right now we currently have coach Robert Guster, Martin Cross and Tim McAllister on staff. Um, now a couple of those guys and in, in Tim and, and coach Guster do have some Texas ties and with Coach Lutz going to Oklahoma State, you know, there could be, you know, some possibility and potential that maybe those guys might be considered to uh, go with Coach Lutz. Now, I haven't heard any news of that, um, no rumors, no rumblings of it. But I would like to think that there might be a pretty good chance that this staff could stay together, you know, have continuity not only in the player ranks but in the staff ranks um, and just help us, you know, literally run this thing back you know we we saw a, a season that had some ups and downs we saw a lot of good basketball we saw some bad basketball but it all came together in march when it needed to and we made that special run and if they are able to keep his staff together you know that just leads to needing to find one person basically to backfill um his own position you know or you know a, a secondary or third assistant coach down the roster um and I think just looking at his former staff record there at, uh, at Indian Hills, he's got a lot of connections, a lot of a lot of guys that have gone to a lot of different programs. Um, you know, maybe even somebody that's already on the support staff already here at Western. You know, maybe he can identify somebody you know within the program and and elevate them. You know, I I, I love when that continuity happens. When we can identify someone, and and really just. When you all have that uh, familiarity with each other, it makes coming into a new season in an environment just that much easier. Um, Tyler, I guess, what are your thoughts on the staff potential uh, and how this could look running into next year? Jesus, that light first came on. I was like, something was going wrong with me. Uh, you know, uh, you said that Tim McAllister has some ties back in Texas, that's true, but he also has some ties to South Central Kentucky, where he went to school down in Russellville, uh, and at Logan County in Russellville. Um, you know, I'm really hoping for the best here that we can keep them too, but if we can only, if one gets gets pulled away, I, I sure hope that we can we can keep the second one, or the third one, and uh, because you know, uh, you're right, not only in continuity of the team, but also continuity of the coaches who buy into the same kind of offensive scheme and, and defensive scheme and kind of all kind of pull their weight. You know, that's definitely that's definitely very important. So I'm hoping that we can keep um, the base of this whole staff. I hope Lutz has some other uh, picked out from uh, – from, from all over the country, and he can just leave us where we are with the people that we have. Please, let's do that. Plana go. That's my new uh, hashtag, not let's go, Plana go. Um, but overall, I just want to just really emphasize that I'm, I'm a really big supporter of this hire. I think, you know, from day one when the rumors had started, you know, I've been very upfront on our Twitter account saying that, you know, this is a Hank Plana account. I think this is the right move. I think it's the best move. Um, and I think in today's era of the transfer portal and NIL, you know, players getting paid and, and that being a, a contributing, heavy contributing factor to recruitment, you know, I think who better to help lead and shape a program than someone mm -hmm. who was at a junior college program for eight years and highly successful at it. And, and players only there for two years. You're getting players for two years max, and then you're turning over that roster. You know, every two years you're turning over a lot of guys. Uh, we and we see he sent 58 guys to four-year Division One schools, and 20 guys now are playing professionally in eight years. So um, he's had a lot of success identifying talent, developing talent, 
and sending them on to better places to um, better their future, you know, whether at a, a higher ranked school or professionally. So, you know, I think in today's world um, with the Red Tau Trust and the transfer portal, you know, I think we have all the, the keys and tools available to us as long as we get behind this coach, uh, we get behind the Red Tau Trust and just really support this coach, this program, this staff, and you know help us build and retain the best possible roster i think hank plana is going to be an excellent hire you know obviously every every hire is a gamble whether if you want to hire an up-and-coming hot shot from a a major p5 that may be a hot name on a coaching list or if you're hiring a a retread you know we saw bob huggins we saw tom crean you know we've heard darren horn last year will wade you know all those retread coaches um you know, it's a gamble. No matter who you're going to ha- look at, who you're going to hire, you know, I think the continuity and the familiarity and the system and the players um, that we're going to bring back next year are going to put us in a better place than what we were a year ago. You know, this time last year, you know, we had a roster of three, four players coming back mm-hmm. and we had no idea. You know, and I remember going through our position football uh series and then we you know we talk about some basketball recruiting it took a long time uh until the brandon newman was finally recruited and that kind of opened the floodgates and we saw a lot of basketball players start to commit here uh, until we got to bj marable and terry on murdix that filled out the roster but you know i think this year there's going to be a lot less unknowns and i think hank plana has has proven himself to be a winner He's put himself in position to be given this chance to be a Division I head coach uh, for Western Kentucky. And I think he's going to do great things. Now, I could be wrong. You know, we could revisit this, you know, a year from now, two, three years from now, and maybe it doesn't work out. You know, look at the last 10, 15 years of, of WKU basketball. There's only been a couple coaches that have been super, super successful and you know, the landscape of college basketball has changed a lot since, you know, the Dennis Felton days and the Darren Horn days of when he was here prior. So, you know, we have to adapt with the times um, and a younger coach that is familiar with roster turnover and just identifying, you know, Juco talent um, and transfer talent, I think is somebody that's going to put us on the right path to continually putting ourselves in position to get to the NCAA tournament, which is the goal. We did it this year. It's been 11 years. Um, we don't want that to happen again. We want to do it again next year. You know, my, my trip to Huntsville is already penciled in next year. Uh, I'm sure you're going as well. So I can't wait for it. I'm excited for this hire. Um, and I, I think he's going to do great things um, in Ditto arena and for this program mm-hmm. next year. So I'm very, very, very excited mm-hmm and glad for this hire and you know obviously you know as the official news of you know recruiting and portal and staff you know as as that those items officially become reportable news obviously we'll we'll come back and we'll share those um at a relevant time but right now we're just speculating on what could happen what we hope happens and you know we'll go from there just like we did last year but from from the outside looking in right now it doesn't look like we're going to have a big, huge roster overhaul that we've had for the last seven, eight years. You know, it looks like we might have some continuity, some familiar faces coming back and, you know, have an idea of what this team's going to look like, you know, before game one tips off in late October. So I'm excited for it. I'm here for it. Um, and I'm ready for the Hank Plana era to begin officially. So Tyler, hit us with your final words and take us out of here. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of echo what you said. Uh, you know, it having a coach that you're right, used to the roster turnover, used to losing players, used to having to scramble around and find them. I mean, you could either have that or you could have someone who's been in the in the D1 coaching career for 10, 15, you know, 20 years. And, uh, you know, he's kind of like a dinosaur when it comes to the way uh, – the landscape of college basketball basketball is now you know i think it's been cool to have bob huggins do i think he would done good here i don't know i mean he's he's been out of it for a few years kind of forced out and um i mean with the way the nils is now and 
in the transfer portal. I mean, I really don't know, but I am thankful that we did get Hank. I'm a big fan of him as well. Uh, I think he, I think he will do good things here. I think he will continue to elevate WKU basketball. And uh, I mean, I am excited to see what this off season unfolds and see what this, uh, see what the team comes up with next next season. Uh, and you're right in late October. Uh, also, I'd like to say I hope everyone back in, in South Central Kentucky is safe today. Uh, from the storms that I've heard that some people was hiding in shelters or hiding in basements and everything here not too long ago. Um, I hope no one seriously got injured or, or hurt. Um, and uh, and with that, I'll say Mafu has a better than us, man. Nobody, buddy. You know it. Go Tops from the beach. Go Tops. Later, Go guys. Tops. See you.